Wow. Look at it. That's amazing. So Miley Cyrus liked our sweet. That is awesome! Yeah. Oh, isn't that cool? It's really that sweet. so cool. I know, and I like watched it, I was like, what did we say? And I actually really like what we said. That that's an so old cool. one. Yeah, yeah, I looked at it, I was like, when did that happen? Yeah. Do you think it's actually her, or do you think it's um her like team? somebody that's like managing her Instagram account? I, I know think. like a lot of her Instagrams are personal. Like, remember when she yeah. was like real crazy with her Instagram? She went crazy. Well, she shut it down, that's what's weird. Like when I was like, Oh, where is like, oh, let's click on Miley's page. Not No posts. Really? Nothing. Her picture really? is just black. So oh. I was like, Miley, like, what are you doing? Where are you? Hmm. Yeah, well, she kind of has been going down that route of a little bit more of like pulling back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things kind of calmer now. Yeah. yeah. Life calmer. Yeah. Stop smoking weed. She's just kind of oh, like going did. through. Yeah. Yeah, there's like did. a big deal. Yeah. Like she was on talk yeah. shows talking about it. It was before, I feel like it was before her most recent album, Younger Now. Mm -hmm. Like she was mm -hmm. like, uh, now it's making me foggy or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I know some people like weed affects them a lot. Like their yeah. life is completely different. Well, I had yeah, a buddy that was a like. Lot. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if it, when if it's it becomes like, like a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, when you're just regularly smoking or like people don't notice when you're high. I have a lot of friends that. I'll be hanging out with them, and then they'll be like, sorry, I'm high. I'm like, we've been hanging what? out for an hour and a half. Like, I had no idea. Like Functional high people. Yes. yes. That's not me. No, 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 me I'm neither. completely no. not functional. No, mm -mm. Yeah. I had buddies in college that were, like, very functional. Well, mm -hmm. functional Yeah, high. but they'd yeah. go to work. I'd be like, I yeah. can't work like this. No, 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 no. But they, they feel not. better stoned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I had a friend that was like, I can't smoke weed anymore because he's like, when I'm, when I'm smoking weed regularly, yeah. I want to live in a van. And like, I just mm. want to like get away from everything. Yeah. And he did that for a while. Wow. And then he stopped soaking weed and he was like, okay, like this is just better for my life. I'm yeah. just like a more productive, regular member of society. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't notice that big of a change for myself. But then again, I don't, I'm not a crazy. You used to smoke a lot more weed. When? You, you, when I first <laughs> met you, Paige, you were smoking. What are you telling them? Wake me, Paige, wake me. Are you like telling these people this? <laughs> Are you getting red? You're getting red. I'm nervous about it. I have family members that watch this. That know. <laughs> Nobody knows. Literally no one yeah. in my family except my siblings. Well, your siblings, that's what that's well, my who siblings, watches this. Yeah. No. I'm like very red. I'm like so warm right now. I'm so warm. So warm. So warm. So warm. Ah, but I want to change the subject. Oh gosh. Okay. You guys, I don't the, when I don't Paige think this, is on PC. First off, first off, you have a pass. It's legal here. I know. You can go to the store and buy weed, so it's not even Smoke a deal outside. anymore. This you, is yeah. true, I guess, if I was thinking about that. But I think about my family, like, and how religious they are and stuff like that, or how it ruined my siblings' they lives. They all know you are a lost cause, Paige. <laughs> <laughs> Let us not lie. Your religious family knows. They know you, you dance at booty. They know you've they done everything. You asshole. Everything I'm just saying. you've done. Everything. You've done everything. I've done nothing. Including <laughs> anal. Uh, hey! <laughs> While on PC, you yes. asshole. <laughs> okay. You want to go on? Not true. I do want to hear this more about true. what you have to say about me smoking weed so much. Like no, 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 no. It wasn't so much, but it was like a very regular thing for you. It was like a part of your life. Like anytime we went out places, it was like weed. When? <sighs> It was like in your house more. It was just like there. And now, like, I remember I just saw a shift where it was just like less and less. And now I don't really hear about yeah, it. Yeah, no, I regular. don't anymore. I don't have any time. You're, you're busy. Time. It's almost it's, all, but it's a thing. No, it is yeah. a thing. Because if you have a show, if you have writing, yeah. if you've got tide pool, if you have anything, if I need to drive, if, no, if there's not. no way I'm going to no even. Way. Yeah, because both my siblings have DUIs. So it was always like a big rule mm -hmm. for me to not. Ever, because a lot of people love smoking and driving. They're like, "Oh, it's I love being on the road and listening to what, music." What's your guys' favorite thing to do while high? Because it mm. used to be for me a uh, two things. Mm -hmm. mm. One, it was watching something funny. Okay. Because that that was like my favorite thing yeah. was just how weed made yeah. me laugh like a ton. Okay. And the second was music and visualizations. Yeah. And back in college, visualizations sucked ass, but they were still like the <laughs> best. Like 
I'd put like Radiohead on, and I'd be like, like this little dot it. would be like, and I'd be like, oh, just playing centipede, oh like holy God. crap, the visuals on centipede and. Okay, I don't know what happened. I don't know if like the strains of weed that like my friends all had started to change or whatever influx was going around because I didn't know what I was smoking. It was whatever my friends had, right? Yeah. I don't know if that changed yeah. or I changed, like my physiology changed, but um, it stopped having those effects. Mm-hmm. And stuff stopped seeming cool, stuff stopped seeming funny, and mm-hmm. I just got tired of hungry. I think that And happens, I started though. to just be like, I don't see the purpose of this anymore. I have a friend um, who just started smoking weed, and he's in his 30s. It's like his first time, though. And he was like, oh, I just sit in bed and listen to music. And then another friend was like, I guess I could say their names. It was Claudio just started, and then, like, Samir was like, that's cute. I stopped doing that really quick. Because that's, I feel like there is that just natural thing that it becomes almost normalized, and then you just mm-hmm. eat and sit and don't do hmm. anything. Yeah, yeah, well, I just stopped yeah. liking it, because I was yeah, like, yeah. I don't like these effects. But, just lethargic. But then I did it with you, like, a few mm-hmm. times, um... Maybe last year, a few years ago, yeah. I started doing When I was a heavy pod When you were a heavy smoker. fucking pod smoker, Paige. <laughs> and I actually started, and I liked it more. Yeah, we I had hadn't fun. Do, I hadn't done it in so long. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, this is like some of the older effects yeah. that I had. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You know what's interesting is you were talking about, we were talking about functionality, like mm-hmm. while on high. Mm-hmm. Oh, I asked you guys what your favorite thing was. I didn't hear yeah. it. Was, sorry. Yeah. My favorite thing, I don't like to be super high, just in general, because then I feel like I all of a sudden I'm dead, and I'm like, well, useless, and I don't like to be, so I like to just be a little bit, and like, be dancing, mm. or at a show, where it's like, oh, I'm just going to absorb all of it, okay. with like, or with, with a buddy who's kind of the same, like, you're not too high, you're just going to have a funny conversation, mm. and things are funny, or like... I'm like, so what interactions. Did I yeah, so interaction, but but chill, but okay. definitely not. I don't want to be yeah. like super. Because then you miss. I feel like I miss everything, and it's just too much. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm kind of down that road as well. I love listening to like full albums. Mm. Yeah, and I will put on like my favorite album. You're like a '70s pod smoker. <sighs> That's how we like, were in chill like Chill on some college. throw pillows yeah, and a rug. Yeah, like throw the lights on the like on yeah. the ceiling and have them like spinning around, and then just like listen to like. Dark Side of the Moon. Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. And then, like, now it's like, no, instead it'd be like, to pimp a butterfly. <laughs> and we'll just, like, sit there and be like, oh, listen to the nuances. And you sound like a dumbass, probably. <laughs> but it's like, you feel better. And then talking, too. Like, talking is so nice. Like, when you're just, again, not crazy. So, like, I can't function mm-hmm. high. Did you guys see that comment on our newest vlog that said, this is why you don't eat edibles? I feel like, like I'm sticking to vape pens. Did yes, you guys see I this comment? No. Yeah. Hey, dude, what's up? I don't know who that was. <laughs> about our last talk? No, about the last vlog. Oh, the, the one vlog. that went up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, today, actually. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The worst Randy. experience I ever had stoned, um, which was actually a worse experience for someone else, way worse, mm. but uh, was my buddies were like, well, you, you want to go... <laughs> this buddy, Ryan, that was always like... You want to smoke weed and then blank? You know what I mean? He's like, oh. you want to go smoke this joint and then blank? And so yeah. this time he's like, you want to go smoke this joint down by the river? And like, just hang out and watch the river? I was like, sure. So then me, this. Mel, and this guy, Ryan, we go to the river, smoke this joint. I, like I said, I'm not a functional high person. I get really fucking stoned. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where I'm like, everything's just, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So then I go back to Boulder, which is where I went to college. And I'm walking up the hill with my buddy Mel. And the hill is just like a popular area where a lot of people are. And there's a lot of houses. We're walking by this house, and this girl runs out, and she's crying frantically. She's like, help me, help me, help me. And she's she can't breathe, and she's crying. And I'm like, I don't know what, like, first off, yeah. I'm really high, so I'm trying. I'm like, my immediate thought is someone's hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Someone's really hurt. I was yeah. like, what's wrong? Like, just yeah. try to tell me. Finally, she, like, catches her breath, and she was like, a guy just, like, attacked me in my house. <gasps> and um, first off, he, like, he had a knife, I guess, and, like, tied her up. And then he was like, I'm not going to, like, hurt you. Don't worry. Then, like, rummaged around her house and then came back and was like, all right, I'm going to get on top of you now. And then tried to rape her. And then she fought him off, I guess, and then burst out of the doors. And then right when I was, like, walking up to her. Yeah. Yeah. This all eventually came out. And I just remember being, like, so high and this like really traumatic event is like happening you know what I mean and I'm staring at the door Mm -hmm. because I'm like oh that means this guy's about to like come out of this Mm -hmm. door right here 
I guess the reality was there was a back door and he just like ran out the back door and you know what I mean yeah. and and so I, and I, I remember I remember I walked towards the door because I was like okay this guy's gonna like come mm -hmm. out of the store and she was like don't leave don't leave don't leave me because she was like totally freaked out and there was actually this uh, unfortunately wasn't like an isolated event there were known that there was like a guy going around doing this to like these college women in Boulder you know what I mean like oh my God. I don't know terrifying this, yeah the city guy when you told me that story the first time I like viscerally felt it like because we were like coming up from Arizona and reading that books on tape so my mind was so like in that I see yeah we were reading the yeah. book um a basically I don't know if you guys know this but Patton Oswald's wife who passed away yeah. At the time of her passing, was writing a book about a serial killer. Yeah. Which is really just so ironic that mm -hmm. she died, died in, in her sleep. Yeah, she died in her sleep. I mm -hmm. guess she was taking some sleeping pills, maybe something. or something. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't quite deal remember. With stress and yeah, and oh, I she didn't she was wake sick, up. So she just like no, died. She was, I don't think so. She wasn't. Yeah. Um, oh my God, but we were it, the way she wrote this book was extremely detailed and talking mm -hmm. about this this um this serial killer. It's I, th I think he went by ear or something. something Some of the most rapist. Yeah. I just want. I just wanted to admit, like the th I, the imagery that I remember from that book the most is how uh, people would say that he would just be standing there mm -hmm. with like a, like a mask on, yeah. but he wouldn't have pants on, and he would just be like erect, and then he would be like, and be, like yeah. Ooh. And the way that he explained, I remember just like imagining being Roman in that situation and how fucking terrible or the girl like either like no, anybody. like i said it's much worse for the girl of course yeah but mm -hmm. it, i just remember hearing that story and it like mm. i was very shook in a bad way and yeah. i was like oh my god well, i didn't mean to make it so dark now but like these like fucking killer terrible stories yeah. but i don't Let's know how we got to talk this stuff. about beyonce Ooh. okay yes okay what do you want to talk about this is our resident beyonce stand page Am I? yes mm -hmm. you can lead the beyonce my discussion <laughs> And I love Beyonce. This article's not huge, it's not super long or anything, mm -hmm. but I feel like every single portion was very impactful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in some way. Like when she's talking about her body, I'm like, wow, she's just by saying this, she's kind of like redefining things a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just holding mm -hmm. on to what she has. Yeah. What do you mean? Sorry. Like holding on to the body. Like she's like, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I don't need saying. to. I don't need to get back to where I want it. When no. I when I want to, I will. Just like, like I'll go into beast mode yeah. and yeah. I'll do it. Her yeah. embracing her body. Mm -hmm. Her saying like, mm -hmm. my fupa and I like we're meant to be. Yeah. Like that's already blown up. That's, People are talking about the fupa. Course, People are going nuts about the fupa. Everyone says fupa quiet. Don't talk about that. And now she's like the biggest pop star ever. And now everyone can have a fupa. Yeah. And you yeah. can rock your fupa freely. Yeah. Now because of Beyonce. It's it's weird when Beyonce come comes down to being a human because you think about like the phrases that surround Beyonce like I, I see the mugs and all the things that were like the shirts where people say like I have just as many hours in my day as Beyonce does mm. like it's such a common phrase she's very empowering she's so empowering um, so for her to be like yeah this is my body I'm gonna hold on to it for a while it's like yeah. suddenly I'm like Cool, 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 cool. Me, me too. Like I'm, 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 yeah. I'm gonna chill the and fuck well, out for a second. I like the line where she's like, "My kids and my husband love are loving my new curves." Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I thought that was like a very sweet yeah. line. It is. Yeah. She said another sweet thing about Jay Z too. She was like, "I have like, like been able to witness. Is proud that she's witnessed his evolution." She says, "As yeah. a uh, like partner, best friend, best and a friend. father, yeah. and how he's so supportive and just like." how they've grown so much with whatever's in their past yeah. and just like wow like how this has changed them like how they're a family and then i love how spiritually she takes like the having that like she went through her ancestry.com mm -hmm. uh, you know ancestry.com she went through her ancestry and then how like her she's a descendant of a slave owner who married who fell in love with and married a slave so that was like interesting and having to deal with that. Well, yeah, I like I want to just touch on some of these things before we like oh, yeah. rush away from them. Like I think that the um, the thing about the Jay Z and kind of like witnessing mm -hmm. that that evolution. It's something that mm -hmm. that's been privy to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we all have we are, there's the elevator stuff, and then all yeah. of a sudden his it's infidelity comes wanted. out, and then mm -hmm. yeah. well, and then Lemonade obviously clearly was mm -hmm. her going like, okay, here's all my like feelings yeah, about a lot to a of photo these of things. Babies. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, if you're gonna find it, have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and no, I just think it's interesting because I think I've talked to you about this. Like I'm, I'm like I don't know how I feel about it because yeah, I'm like we've talked about it a lot. He, <laughs> we've talked we talk about, about it every day. Athlete, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, just that he cheated on her, mm -hmm. and it's like 
I start to go like, what I, how would I feel if someone did that? Family, you know what I mean? Could I forgive them? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, happened to both of our parents as well. Like, I think yes, it's yes, very my close. father. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Well, so I think about that, but then again, I don't have a family, so I don't really know mm-hmm. what it's like. If you're like, yeah. can I just blow up this family? Also, mm-hmm. and I do think people can be forgiven and, and totally, mm-hmm. but then seeing them with the on the run tour, I'm like, oh, they're. To have this unified yeah. mm-hmm. front now. And then to hear yeah. these things in the article, I'm like, I just feel mm-hmm. that journey between them mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. pretty strongly. And yeah. it's yeah. it's mm-hmm. it through her and the things she said and like following it from her anger to seeing the on the run tour, then seeing this article, it's like it's almost like I've like cathartically moved through it I with love her. how high Roman is <laughs> in a certain sense if that makes sense yes. yeah I mean it and it's not necessarily because I'm like oh because I'm like so attached to Beyonce's relationship with Jay-Z it's it's yeah. not that I'm mm-hmm. not saying I'm not a fan of Beyonce either it's just it's I'm not necessarily attached to Hollywood relationships so much yeah, yeah. but I think we do project on to people we project on mm-hmm. Hollywood couples like Chris Pratt and yeah. um, Anna, Anna Ferris. Ferris. I'm like, oh, they're one of those real couples that'll be together forever. And then when they're it's not, sad. I'm like, oh, You're like, yeah. What? Roman found out about it this week. Yeah. And oh, he what? looked like he had found out like Santa Claus had like <gasps> didn't exist. Well, just because they, 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 ex- they had, but he didn't know. Because you create ideas yeah. exactly. about what things are. Yeah. So then when she kind of says all this stuff, it is like this weird healing thing where I'm like. Yeah, people can change. Yeah. Yeah, we can overcome adversity. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, unity. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. thing to watch them go through this. I, I fully agree with you on that. Yeah. And, and then mm-hmm. uh, then the next thing you said was like, the, did you want to say something about their relationship? Sorry. Just that uh, it's, I'm, I'm with you 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I definitely have those strange feelings as well, where it's like yeah. personal biases and stuff like that. Like I hear, I still hear my family talk about this shit. Like. I heard about it two days that my sister's still talking. I'm like, what is happening? Like, it's still s- a, such a hard thing to get over. Yeah. And you imagine putting yourself in that situation. And you're like, oh, I don't know about strength or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you see them and you're like, wow, it's mm. beautiful. Or even my favorite line that I'll still hold on to because we literally left Coachella that year the lemonade dropped. Mm. We left. We're like, we don't need to see any more artists tonight. We're going to go listen to Lemonade in bed. <laughs> like, all of us just, like, piled into one bed. And just, it like, was pretty was, much done, though. It, it was, wasn't like we left any big yeah. artists there. Like, we left Guns N' Roses. Like, like, None of no. us were we needed to <laughs> I see I know, but Guns I just love you saying, like, we didn't leave anything. We were also, like, all, like, coming down. Like, we yeah, all, it's it true. Was, we were, yeah. It was definitely, like... I don't want to make, make it seem like we were, like, well, it's 8 p.m. <laughs> I want to go watch Lemonade. I would have enough. I would have. <laughs> <laughs> I had my funnel cake. I can go home. Like, yes, that's all you like, went for. And pack the step and go. No, but the, my, the point of that, all right. Yeah, it's true. There was, when Zed was done, I was good. Mm-hmm. Let's let's head home. Yeah. Um, we literally laid down in the confetti. Oh, that was beautiful. I was all in blue. It was a great night. There was blue lights. Guys, it was a, oh, God. The lights off. were blue. The lights. Anyways, I remember Beyonce saying, nothing real can be threatened. Mm. And it stuck with me to this day. I wrote it in my book that year. I wrote it in my book every single year jottings guys and like I still think about that like nothing Mm. real can be threatened because Mm -hmm. society puts shit on labels and puts shit on opinions about relationships and like you're doing something bad if you're doing that or this person's a dick or this person's Mm -hmm. something you know and it's like no, if it, if you know it's real, then it like nothing real can be threat. I just mm-hmm. remember like hearing that and I, mm-hmm. seeing her up there with Jay Z. I, I I I feel it. Anyway, mm-hmm. we can move on. No, uh, yeah, I think that's all great. And mm-hmm. I think the next thing you were talking about the um, that her yeah mm-hmm. uh, it, that she's from uh, her ancestor is a slave owner that mm-hmm. fell in love with a slave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, that's like such a crazy powerful story. I really want to know that story how did she find out about that yeah. no. how, what is the story behind that I think like people would really be interested to mm-hmm. know yeah. who that person was mm-hmm. was that slave owner a changed person because of mm-hmm. falling in love because and he married her yeah so exactly so like, like wow. what yeah, wow. did yeah. he do did he give up mm-hmm. slaves or yeah. did that 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 slave yeah. get enveloped into a slave owning like family of, right exactly like I don't know white supremacy because it was that. something that she was kind of having to wrestle with as well. Like, it of wasn't course. necessarily like a, like a, oh, this is pretty thing. It How was could a, you not wrestle with that? It's something that <clears throat> none of us will ever understand. Like, that, like, slave owner, like, that mm-hmm. kind of, like, looking into your ancestry and mm-hmm. seeing that. Like, Miles mm-hmm. says stuff like, oh, my, I am Viking fan. Like, no, I don't think anything mm-hmm. would be, like, a dark, troubled area, you mm-hmm. know? Like... 
I guess my final thing to say mm-hmm. about that is that I did appreciate how she was having, so she has twins, male and female, and then she was like, I'm carrying the masculine, feminine energy mm-hmm. inside of me and like giving that, and I was like, that is so cool. Mm-hmm. I just love the idea, and like what she said about raising a daughter and how raising her son to be kind, to both embrace their feminine, masculine sides, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like, I just really like that. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the yeah. line where she said, I want my son to have a high emotional IQ. Yeah. Really, really got me. Yeah. As, as like a guy who feels like he has like a high emotional mm-hmm. IQ, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It is not necessarily the normal like bro, you know, mm-hmm. even though I'm a straight male, like, yeah. um, but so that line, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we you just mean lost the, a bunch of subscribers. I mean, in the comment section, <laughs> guys, spoiler alert, <laughs> he's straight. <laughs> 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 Go on. Um, this is an important point. Please. Yeah, go on, Roman. This is important. I really like it. Like, it's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I like it. No, no, no. I mean, all I wanted to say was, like, I really identified with that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And her talking about, mm-hmm. like, that's when I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. She was talking about that with her son. And I, and I think at the end, it was like, it's something we don't teach our boys. Mm-hmm. And I talking about their relationship with Jay-Z, I do feel like it directly relates to what she's talked about in the past and what Jay-Z has himself talked about as far as like why he cheated because they're going through things emotionally Mm -hmm. and he was saying he didn't have the tools to figure that out for himself and so it just led to infidelity is what he said. Mm -hmm. And so to me that like totally relates to that and I just do think like uh, and and some I do think a lot of times like this can be racial it cannot be but if you grow up in certain environments you are not going to be as emotionally intelligent if that's not given to you if you grow up in like an emotionally I don't know what the word I'm looking for like vacant environment you know what I mean where it's like it's a harsher and it's kind of about it's more about survival yeah you know what I mean and Sometimes people don't have the luxury, maybe. I was going to say, it's a, almost a privilege. Yeah. Yeah. Right? To, to develop that. It is. Um, it's uh, it's harder, right? To understand so those th- those things. And so for her to have that luxury of, like, teaching her son that, mm-hmm. but also t- for her to put that out there yeah. as, like, a person in a public figure, that, I think that meant a lot the to me. The public figure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, to, to say, like, emotional intelligence is this thing that we need, especially our mm-hmm. men, because yeah. just in general men are kind of taught that emotions are weak. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're taught they don't need them. You're not supposed to have them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And even, like, I mean, Women let's are be also honest. taught that. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. everyone is taught that. Mm-hmm. We all have that knee-jerk reaction of, like, mm-hmm. if we're going to cry, we try to stop, right? Get the yeah. hell we out all of there. Have that, we all have that knee-jerk reaction yep. of, like, mm-hmm. don't cry. Mm-hmm. It's Especially this thing of, like, it's around bad. People. Yes, mm-hmm. it's bad. Don't show your real emotions. Ooh. You know what I mean? You have to wonder. Oh yeah. Where that like ne- that neat we all have it. Men or yeah. women, I don't know like very You're not like, supposed to be vulnerable. Sometimes this- I see people that and, and let's be honest, sometimes if you see someone that cries too easy, you're kinda weirded out. Yeah. Like yeah. if somebody's just crying openly yeah. very easily, I'm kind of like, oh, Who are boy. you? Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like again. <laughs> I uh, But it's not a bad thing. I think it's just It's yeah. not. I had a moment um in therapy. <laughs> Let it all out there. now. <laughs> Where I remember saying, like, I don't, um, I don't want to be, I don't want to be seen, like, crying or, or, or being emotional or any kind of vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember, and I, I think I almost find comedy in it, and of course, because we are comedians, but I also loved this moment where my therapist said, did you see Obama's last speech? Mm. Um, as president, I was like, yeah, it was mm-hmm. incredible. And mm-hmm. she's like, he cried. Did you see him cry? Mm-hmm. And I was, I was like, yeah. She's like, did you think he was a, a little bitch, what you're calling yourself? Because that was the term I called myself. Aww. And I said, no, I thought he was insanely powerful, like incredible. She's like, that, that's, you get to say that about yourself too. And I do, I applaud that kind of thing where it's like, when you see people in the, in the Obama that are mm-hmm. like sharing that realness of like, I am emotionally here, um, it is power. Mm-hmm. And I think that it starts to chip away at, the low, the, the lower people, us, you know, who don't quite feel that, um, that it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll read uh, what she said here because I just think it's really powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want the same things for my son. I want her to know that he can be strong and brave, but that he can also be sensitive and kind. Mm-hmm. I want my son to have a high emotional IQ where he's free to be caring, truthful, and honest. It's everything a woman wants in a man, and yet we don't teach it to our boys. 
I hope to teach my son not to fall victim to what the internet says he should be or how he should love. That's another interesting thing because I immediately think they're like, is she saying it's okay for him to be gay or straight? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, how he should love. Yeah, I want to create better representations for him so he's allowed to reach his full potential as a man and to teach him that the real magic he possesses is in the, I don't have the rest here, I just screenshotted that. I love but, it. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if she's saying that about like uh, Gare Strait or if she's saying that he sh that the way you can love somebody can be a strong thing and a sensitive thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, yeah, there's uh, so many different ways that you can see, you can do Yeah, that. I just thought that was really, really beautiful. It it's something that um, I have a, a young nephew. Yeah. Um, uh, you guys have may have seen him in the vlogs mm -hmm. before. Um, and he, it's something I take so seriously thinking about how I can assist in helping him just have a broad sense of the world and feeling love and being able to give love in a certain way. Like it's something that, you know, you don't know how the rest of his family or the rest of environments can like affect mm -hmm. that. So I'm like, I have to do my absolute best to like mm -hmm. shower and give and just mm -hmm. make sure he knows that everything is normal and everything is great. Mm -hmm. And he's, and just so they know it, like, he's half black. Yes. And mm -hmm. um, so he was going to have, like, his own set of expectations and Correct. stereotypes kind of placed on him, you know what I mean, as yes. he grows up. Of course, yeah, and needing to be a certain way or anything, you know? Like, it's, yeah, giving a privilege. Like, I don't know how to explain that the right way, but, like, mm. trying to make sure that he's, that everything is open to that boy. Mm -hmm. Like, no matter what, that he can go do anything with his life and that's, I think, one of my favorite, I love the way my sister is raising my, like, her son. I would have never imagined it. Sorry, Gilly. Um, <laughs> like, I just, when we watch her, we're like, God damn, she's an incredible mom. <laughs> um, no, she will, she'll vouch for that. <laughs> she'll be like, yeah. Um, but just the way that she's just, like, not just, like, I want him to be this. Rose, not even in this part. Go on. Um, I want him to be this incredible, at like, I would love it if he's an incredible athlete, just like his father, but also... Mm -hmm. an incredible mind like there's so yeah. many you don't have to choose like no. all of it oh guys i love where we've gone with all well of this. yeah I'll, I'll i'll switch it to some other stuff that i think is really interesting in this mm -hmm. article um she talked about doing the black national anthem yeah. uh she's talking about how a lot of she knew a lot of people wouldn't even know what that was mm -hmm. me i didn't know what that was yeah mm -hmm. um we talked about our first um coachella beyonce video it, right yeah reaction mm -hmm. video yeah well to me i think that might be and i haven't so, okay first off let me just do a little side everyone's want us to upload the beyonce part three reaction you guys <laughs> i've tried to get it up there but it's just like it's they won't let us put it up because it's uh it's been blocked and we usually cut it we usually cut it a little bit so it'll and it just mm -hmm. hasn't worked and uh we've tried and tried and tried but it just hasn't so I'm yeah. sorry, I don't know if I ever will. We'll do our best. Maybe we can skip to four. Or we can just watch some of the other ones that aren't. Yeah. Maybe they're like crappier live footage from some yeah. people's cameras yeah. we can That's do. The problem is we have good Coachella footage of right, it. Right, which is mm -hmm. the best. It looks amazing. It looks amazing. Anyways, what I want to say is just yeah. like that, that part, I think for me might be the most uh, moving part of the whole thing it's just mm -hmm. it's to her singing and then to them yelling yes, and then the fire and they're yes. like ha ah! and yes. it's like screaming yeah, yeah. Uh, and and i think that's also a moment that i live felt a lot so when i watch it again i get kind of get goosebumps watching oh, yeah. that mm -hmm. that moment that pride is incredible to just all of that um <laughs> okay one uh, one last thing i'll say about the vogue article mm -hmm. um is this so I think you guys saw this as well. It was the first black photographer to have a cover on Vogue yeah. magazine. Yeah, twenty-three. So she, he's young, right? Yeah, yeah twenty-three. Isn't that nuts? That's it's so really, crazy. Really, really. <laughs> I saw pictures of him in like millennial pink, and I was like, oh. but it's also just like she's fucking breaking shit left and right. Always. Right? So, but uh, something I think she was saying, kind of uh, in related to that. Um, uh, so she's talking about social media, mm -hmm. and it kind of made me think of us, like we are now in this social media world trying to like mm -hmm. carve a little space for the mm -hmm. tide pool in social media. And she mm -hmm. says one thing she loves about social media is it's completely democratic. Everyone has a say, mm -hmm. everyone's voice counts, and everyone has a chance to paint the world from their own perspective. And wow, that really made me think of us. Mm -hmm. It really made me think of the tide pool because yeah. we have like a very unique voice. Um, and you know, as you can see, especially in our vlogs, we're strange and weird and 
some people are responding to that yes. and I know other people aren't mm-hmm. but it's kind of like the people that are responding to it that really gives me a lot of joy and and I don't know that that just I kind of really that. like yeah I'm connecting that yeah, yeah it's it's a hard thing for some people social media is you know it's it's not a skills that, that everybody has I don't think you know mm-hmm. you kill it Alejandra with your social social means once yeah I post an Instagram I post an Instagram uh, once a week <laughs> I'm killing it you're killing it <laughs> I'll go through a phase of like yeah, yeah and then I'm like <gasps> and then it's like yeah. so daunting and I want to be like oh, I'm sorry everyone people and I try to reply and sometimes it's just it's, just, it's overwhelming and I don't even have that many people talking to me you're and great I get at it. <gasps> you're the one I see it's like weird I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're killing it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm hiding all the time. It's hard. Uh-huh. It's a weird... It's, it's a thing, like, because I it's grew up without us. social mm-hmm. media, yeah. so it's yeah. a very weird thing yeah. to be like, people want to know about me? Yeah. yeah. It's so yeah. weird to go like, why Why do people want to know about me? Or like, I'm dumb. This is dumb. Mm-hmm. You know, so being like, just get out of my own head and ego about mm-hmm. it and just put something that maybe brightens someone's day or maybe they, they like it, it in a yeah. way. Yeah, totally. You can know? You imagine, can you believe there's children that now their entire lives have been crazy social media yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's Truman awkward, show for everybody for <laughs> yeah uh, we kind of like have our own perspective exactly yeah and, and the- it is a beautiful thing to see people um react to it in a good way and it is it leans into yours too where you'll post something thinking this is dumb this is who cares and and people react and respond and say thank you so much for that like yeah. or they'll feel the same way or they're like mm-hmm. oh my and they're like oh my god so when someone's like oh my god i love uh, charlie hunnam too or whatever like on that <laughs> weird little vlog thing i did and you're like Right, like you get it. Like, it's so cute. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The well, and I think social media, like it's, it has its negatives. It has its like evil side, and we all uh, know that. Of course. And yeah. sometimes that side that can creating. be can feel louder. Just like any yeah. negative thing can feel louder, yeah. like immediately, like a yeah. violence. The one negative thing will be way louder than the, like thirty nice things people said. Yeah. Then that one thing that you know whatever you're just like oh you feel like destroyed just for one <laughs> comment it's such a bummer. one comment i'm like i'm an idiot yeah one thing i think uh, tony robbins once said that always stuck with me is he's like everyone wants to gain significance and he's like and the the quickest way to gain significance is violence because it doesn't take anything and everyone will pay attention to you oh. and I was like, wow, that is, like, really true. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think it's the same thing with, like, mm-hmm. kind of negativity in general. It's mm-hmm. very easy to destroy something. It's very easy to try and cut someone down because it doesn't take any effort. Yeah. And so and and it will gain you. There's a lot of comics that, that work that way. You know what I mean? Um, most it, comics. It just mm-hmm. gains. I don't really most. I don't know about most, but I, I just think it mm-hmm. gains you mm-hmm. attention. Yeah. You know what I mean? And importance very very quick and very very easy and i think that's something that social media suffers from is it's very yeah. easy to cut somebody yeah. down and to talk yeah. shit you know what and i mean and that's something that didn't happen i feel like that's newer is the ability to be like a not have anonymous hate mm-hmm. is without consequence is mm. so new because mm-hmm. like if i think back to like childhood or like high school or anything if you wanted to be mean mm-hmm. or a, like aggressive or, or do something you had to actually do that and then most of the time there was a consequence you yeah. know like great detention someone would hear about it and they would mm-hmm. come to you or like mm-hmm. something you would get that pit that's that feeling the pit of your stomach like i did something wrong because i got caught or i'm in yeah. trouble yeah you would definitely get in trouble yes and and that would begin a pattern of don't yeah. do that yeah. you know like yeah um which I don't think happens anymore because it's all like anonymous. They don't get in trouble. Yeah, there's no. Yeah. Which worries me. Yeah. And it but takes part away of me empathy. Kind of like you just have to leave them with their, their anger? hate. Yeah. yeah, I think you just yeah. leave someone with their anger, and it's like in the car. You know what I mean? When yeah. somebody's upset, it's like it's really hard not to let whatever they're yeah. doing affect you. And I don't know. Yeah, yeah. just try to leave them with their anger. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so I'm going to read a question we got on okay. YouTube from Alex Alice relating to Beyonce. Love you guys so much. You all are so funny. Thanks. This has been on my mind for a long time. One day I listened to this radio broadcast where we were comparing, what well, they were comparing Beyonce to Michael Jackson. This kind of went, did the rounds like a few months ago. So mm-hmm. we're a little bit late to this comparison discussion. Yeah, because of what chance um, said. Everybody doing, there were brackets on the radio mm-hmm. uh, or online, the, the radio yeah. stations had posted brackets and they were like Beyonce songs, Michael Jackson songs, like who's yeah. better? Yeah, exactly. But I saw a ton of videos about it, but 
Has Beyonce reached Michael Jackson level? What are your thoughts on that? In my opinion, she is the Michael Jackson of my generation. Would love your thoughts on this. Smiley face. So um, I'll post post it to you guys. Huh. It's it's a tough question. Where do you where do you land on that? I I land in a very similar place to when we discussed this before, briefly, um, when we were driving. Um, that I think that technology has a lot to do with it. That I think mm-hmm. that, like I agreed that, I don't think that, I don't know, it's so hard. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man, okay. It's, it, it flusters me, like I don't. Yeah, you got flustered there. Oh yeah, I mean I was flustered back then too because I'm like, I love Beyonce and truly I think that she has surpassed but that it comes down to what you were, I remember we t- us talking about it, you are like, uh, her concerts have, like, the visuals, the sound, et- like, the video, like, you're seeing things better than Michael could have ever gotten to, which is an unfair advantage. And, and I feel like he really kind of blazed the way, you know, like, because he was so, like, the, gee, like, his stuff was just, there would was be so no groundbreaking. Beyonce. There would be no Beyonce without Michael. Is that... <sighs> It's so hard. But, you know, it's like just, like, he was just so different and, and brought so much that, you know, that other people were able to kind of, like, you know, spring from that, you know, mm-hmm. were able to use yeah. that. Definitely. Oh, yeah. And it's like, yeah, I think she's massive and huge and she'll, she's classic and that's, but it's kind of hot, but it's so tricky because he's so bro- groundbreaking, as is she, but he really kind of set the stage. I don't know. Yeah. And then, and you have so many sides to him, too, like... Musically, you're just like, whoa, amazing. And yeah. then I'm not saying that she's not. Of course she is. Uh, but then you also have, like, the other side that you're like, whoa. That she doesn't, there's yeah. nothing yeah. not, like, she puts that stuff out mm. deliberately. Like, we see the beautiful pictures. We know things happen. But, but Michael, no. but, 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 but by Michael's different. Like, there are so many other things, like, Neverland, and Liz Taylor, McCulloch. And putting baby out of a window. Wait, like, there's that side of him that's Even if eccentric. you loved Michael Jackson to death. You you know he's weird. You cannot he's, say yes. he wasn't he wasn't. And strange. we don't know. And you're just like you know that, like those the pedophilia charges. Like there's way more underneath. There's like there's so much more to the Michael Jackson's legacy yeah. that you're like whoa. That is very different from just this like amazing. Well, here's here's I think a part of that too is. Of, okay, of course these are like impossible comparisons in a certain yeah, sense, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But one thing I think is Michael Jackson's story is done. Yes. Beyonce's is not. Yeah. Michael's, yeah. as far as we know, it's done. I mean, maybe more. He just came out with a song with Drake, so he's still coming out with music. But um, <laughs> his story is done. Hers is not. She has gone, like, straight up. Like, yeah. Yes. Her trajectory is, like, her art gets better. Her yeah. music gets better. Everything her gets her better. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. I think of Michael Jackson, and I, I, think, I think this is what you both are saying, kind mm-hmm. of, is, like, in, in the realm of, like, what he has represented, like, globally as far as, like, pop culture, mm-hmm. he, he looms larger. And I think that yes. it's, it's... But he looms larger than pretty much everyone other than, everyone. like, the Beatles. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. like, the Beatles, Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson. Yeah. and mm-hmm. I can't really think of anyone else almost. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Level, yeah. yeah, it was, like, he was a legit phenomenon. It's, like, mm-hmm. it's like Michael Jackson, Harry Potter, mm-hmm. Star Wars. I mean, there's, like, very yeah. Yeah. few things, and she's... Mm-hmm getting there I don't think she's attained that level yet but when it just comes to like her art when it just comes to like what she's doing her performances Mm -hmm. I do think that it's greater than what Michael Jackson has done because she has included so many things from history from uh you know just socially then on top of it musically and when I watch the 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 Coachella performance I'm like I've never seen anything like Nothing this like and it. it's almost like a sport you know what I mean it's like mm. there's athletes now would crush some of the athletes before yeah. you know what I mean mm-hmm. but it's like you said it's like they also are standing on the shoulders and it's also impossible to say like maybe Michael wouldn't have done what Beyonce's doing mm. if he had it maybe he would have done 
just as much. Who knows? Oh, it, you mean if he was in... If he was nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's true because it's all situational. It all, like, lands exactly well, it's where like they his land. music videos were, like, like thriller. Like, he brought such a cinematic quality mm-hmm. to all of his music. And thriller was anyone, groundbreaking. It was yeah, groundbreaking. Was like, but then you think of even him as a child, like Jackson... Fi- like, yeah. he's, like, he really is, like, he encapsulates, like, more than just an artist. You're right about that. Yeah. He's an entire yeah. sensation. As far as, like, a pop phenomenon globally sales wise Mm -hmm. the fever that was around michael jackson it just it it's it's just not quite the same like beyonce is hugely popular Mm -hmm. hugely but her her reach yet isn't quite as big as michael's was because everybody watched i remember without social media yeah without social media i remember very true that's such a huge part i remember when black and white came out Mm -hmm. and my family sat Mm -hmm. down to watch (laughs) the premiere of the video (laughs) yes we were all watching it like yeah we all sat down to watch the premiere of black and white and then macaulay culkin was in it if Uh you guys remember yes and so then the whole music video goes yeah. and then there's that weird fucking thing at the end where he's spinning around and he zips up his zipper do you remember this and my mom was like what is this like she was like so un- like like not pleased yeah. with the whole like yeah. because it was it was like very kid oriented at first and then it was like, oh, by the way, I'm not for kids. Like, and it's like, I'm going to zip up yeah. my zipper. It was like really kind of strange. Yeah, that, was, that was Michael, too, I feel but, like. But I just think, and, and I don't want this to come off as like a, a, a disparaging against Beyonce. I'm just talking about globally what I see as far as like the reach, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like the fever around it. Artistically, then it becomes something that's much more harder to argue. Oh, yeah. And... Mm-hmm. And honestly, like impossible to argue. Yeah. And I honestly do think Beyonce has surpassed Michael in certain ways artistically. I, would agree with you. Um, I think you've said all of this perfectly, by the way. Like, I don't think anybody can say like. No, people this. will be upset. I think. I really? think some. I don't. I think. It, yeah, I yeah. don't know. Because I mean, you could I'm look like at it. You're like, going like, damn, I Roman mean, is killing this. Well, it's crazy because doesn't he still have like? Um, d- does he still have a few albums left to be released for his kids? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know about this. No, remember after he died, he had something, he's still releasing so that his kids have this legacy so they still get money. That's oh, crazy. I don't know yeah, there was one I that was say, like right after. He's still a phenomenon. Mm. Like, when he died, I worked at a hospital and I'll never forget that day because the phones started going insane in the call centers. Like, they just were like, what's wrong? What is going yeah. on? And it was just yeah. people trying to figure out where he was. And like, what, like, and it was a mix of like actual health professionals mm-hmm. and like like media and just hospital like representatives like so much and it was like this would not happen for anybody else. Mm-hmm. I I think I know where he's buried because I used to run in that cemetery and they have like guards and security all wow. out like and you can't wow. go near it so there's like shrines and like bushes near yeah. maybe where it is like it's sorry go on ramen alarm <laughs> ramen alarm <laughs> it's. Like, it's so, like, that aspect of how huge he is is still so mm-hmm. visceral. You, can, you know yeah. how big he is still. Yeah. Like, she, I mean, Beyonce is the closest thing absolutely. right now mm-hmm. to, I mean, and, and that's the thing is, like, there's really no one on Beyonce's level right now. And I think I can safely say that. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. not just with, like, how big she is, but, like, even reading this article, I'm just like, my God, you just are culturally causing weight. If you can say FUPA and everyone just goes like, like yes. what, you said FUPA? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's true. So I think it's a mm-hmm. fair comparison because I think some people are even upset of like, there was I think a faction of people saying, it's not even fair, you shouldn't, you should stop even comparing mm-hmm. Michael Jackson to Beyonce mm-hmm. people on the Michael Jackson side. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I totally think that's a fair comparison. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't, especially to like when you think about how Beyonce's story like I said is still mm-hmm. going on like she's still on this upward trajectory mm-hmm. everyone's yeah. still going to be curious like what is the next art that you're bringing yeah in? she's going to have to just get up 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 in it and they just handle and they handle things completely differently their lives are to- so different like you're like I feel like with with her you're not surprised you're just like wow babies and they're beautiful you know but michael jackson surprises you you know like it's just like his his kids had like blankets on them 
There is so much weird stuff. Even there. if you look at the way she handles her life. Like, I remember back, what, a year ago? Like, when we were watching the videos on, like, the bossy moments or, like, the moments on Beyonce. Yeah. Like, the way yeah. that she is in charge of every aspect mm-hmm. of her life. Mm-hmm. She's making sure that nothing like that would ever happen. Like, she is... Mm-hmm. But still, stuff still comes out. I mean, the elevator course, stuff still comes yeah. out. Yeah, and then she turns it into a song. Like, like, it's like she still turns that yeah. into an art form. Yeah. Like. It's what she does. It's just in. It's She's probably way better with PR than Michael Jackson. It, there that we go. Okay, she went. He. Yeah. I don't think. So. Well, I just think maybe that part of it too is just like his personality was really tough to not have stuff come out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because of, he was tough to kind of not control. Well, well no, yeah, because like you're talking about, like just certain things happened in the public eye. Yeah. yeah. That were hard to ignore, and and of yeah. course the way like he looked, and a lot of people are saying, well, it's because of the. Oh, what is it? The vitiligo. The vitiligo. Yeah, yeah. The and, skin change. But I mean, he did have like a lot of plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. There was all of that yeah. stuff. And he you bleached know his mean? skin then, which was, I mean, it, it was a choice, but it was definitely something where then suddenly he was alarming. Like it was just, too, it was a big change. But it's like you even had his like, in Deontay, um, Deontay, <laughs> Beyonce saying as a dancer. Beyonce is an amazing singer. She's a great dancer. So was Michael. But. Michael really like I feel changed music he changed Mm -hmm. dance like he influenced so many people on so many levels everything you can on fashion like like on just so many different levels that I that's true it's Michael yeah Yeah. like so many hip hop like all these dancers I kind of feel weird that we don't have Michael Jackson it is strange yeah Yeah, Um, I will say as a good thing like uh, what I like about to like how that what this person did say where Mm. Beyonce is this generation's Michael. I love that our generation's Michael is a woman, first of all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I'm in love with that, mm-hmm. that she's this, like, mm-hmm. stunning black woman. Like, just this, mm-hmm. I'm, like, thrilled about that. She is, like, the perfect embodiment of what the culture needs right now. Mm-hmm. Yes. A powerful black woman that is just That's everything you want. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, so incredible. Yeah, it's the perfect icon. Okay, well, this subject, I think, like, we have come to this sort of yeah. pass of, like, it's a, almost, like, impossible to say, but I think we're kind of all in agreement yeah. here about yeah. certain yeah. ideas. Yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, I want to know. And I know this is, like, question. some of, like, an older... Yeah, I remember when uh, Chance said it. I couldn't believe that Chance said that, where he... He made his choice. Chance was like, Beyonce is better than Michael. Like, he just said it, and I'm like, yeah. oh... Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think, I don't know the the phrase, but was he saying, he? I think he was talking about Coachella, right? And he was like, that Coachella performance was better than Michael, anything Michael ever did. Yeah, that's what we're and talking about, yeah. And I think in that way, you can say that that's true, mm-hmm. I think. Because yeah, that again. that Coachella performance for me was like, kind of like a, the, 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 k- kind of like a peak performance of almost anything, anything. I've seen as far as like musically related, like, large yeah. art pieces or you know what I mean yeah. like it's quite anything so I just see his point yeah see, but how many shows did like I've never seen Michael Jackson live I don't no, know I if I'd seen him if and I would have been would like never Whoa. you know so yeah. and did, has chance I don't know you mm-hmm. know so it's kind of mm-hmm. like you we can only see it's, stuff like on and in his time he would have never been able to to do what she did yeah. like yeah. because of yeah because of her resources because yeah. of, because that's, of technology like yeah. it's mm-hmm. that's a thing I, I think an important thing too is like it doesn't. They don't need to take away from each other. No. Nope. Yeah. And and mm-hmm. if if wherever Michael Jackson is right now, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and, and wherever Beyonce is right now, mm-hmm. she's not going like, I'm better than Michael Jackson, yeah. and he's not going like, she's not better than me. No. Yeah. They're both appreciating Separate each other. Like entities. she mm-hmm. is so aware of the people that come before her. She even talks about it in the article. Mm-hmm. She is just nothing but grateful for the mm-hmm. the shoulders that she's standing mm-hmm. on. Of course, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, and and as I, I know all the all, like, allegations about Michael and all these things, but like I generally have like a good feeling about Michael Jackson. I feel like he was this nice person. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like I and I, yeah. to be honest, like I grew up really loving Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he was my first cassette tape. I had bad. Um, good cassette tape. Yeah, I had, I had the bad cassette tape growing up. Like, I really loved Michael Jackson. Like, going to the, the rides at Disneyland. Or I was just a really big Michael Jackson fan. So mm-hmm. I, I always have had, like, a good feeling about Michael Jackson. And I just feel like he uh, would say the same thing about Beyonce. Because he was so, so... He also knew where he came from. He was so respectful when it came to, mm-hmm. like music and 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 respecting music and and his peers Uh, so i just feel like i I guess the point i'm just trying to make is like i don't think this conversation and saying like oh michael this but beyonce this is like dividing anything for me in my mind no it's like it's kind of this idea about like love i think we come in 
to society with this idea mm-hmm. of like you love one person mm-hmm. and you only love that person and you have this much love so don't love that but it's like yeah i think we all need to like get used to this idea that like there's, a, there's the, room the love to appreciate can go and love more around yeah. exactly without exactly. taking one from the other this. and i don't think this person was being like no. decide which better i think like the way they even worded it was like yeah it was great my, yeah, yeah generation yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it like they're just both great. yeah big but it's an it's an interesting comparison to make yeah and the fact that beyonce's even getting there uh-huh. is yeah. is pretty awesome it's, it's and incredible yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like the lebron you know Oh, MJ yeah. comparisons. Everyone wants it, but they're fun. To, they're fun conversations to have, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. And it's hard bringing that up. Actually, that reminds me of like MJ versus LeBron. Like we're so close to our our generation's version of it. Mm-hmm. Like you can't even see it. The same way we were talking about clothing the other day, and how you can't see what the 2010s are because we're in it. The two yeah. thousand. Like, mm. but while you, you can guys, see yeah, other, like, what are the two thousands? What defines the two thousands? Def- yeah, we don't like, know, right? Nineties has looks. Eighties has looks. But then like. 2010? Legally Blonde? Was like, that? What is it? Like, what did I wear? What did I wear That's the thing. Is, all I, yeah, we talked about it, and that's age. a thing where I could think of, I think we could think about, like, LeBron or Beyonce, where it's like, we can't even fully decide because they haven't even become their biggest version. Of, like, it's too mm-hmm. close. It's right here still. Yeah. While Michael and, and Michael, like, both Michael, it's, like, yeah. very easy to see, like, wow, that's your whole discography almost you know <laughs> we got it guys yeah cool. thank you sound off in the comments on what you believe or think about uh, all the things we talk about Beyonce yeah. Andrea Collins yeah. say what you think about Beyonce yes hi yes. girl yes <laughs> hey uh, girl yes. Hey. here's a, a, a question from Mandy Weber um, ooh Mandy, uh, you you give us like really nice comments Beautiful on comments. the Mandy. on the vlogs or yeah, the reactions, so really appreciate that. Uh, Mandy's from Australia, yes. and yep. um, so as an Australian, I'm wondering, have you seen the Aussie stand-up comedian Hannah Gadsby's show Nanette? I've been wanting to request a reaction on it, but thought that the short reaction videos were not long enough. Um, I believe it needs to be watched in its entirety before commenting on it. Have seen two previous channels reviewing it as they watched. They completely missed the key message by not seeing it through to the end. Anyways, I'll leave it there. Okay, so we can talk about this. I'll give a yes. little background on this, actually, because we're all on an improv team. Mm-hmm. And our improv coach, she, we were doing like a, a, a session with her, and she mm-hmm. stops and she's like, Oh, my God, have you guys seen Hannah Gatsby's uh, Nanette? Nanette? And she was like, it's changing everything. And she, and she starts like, tearing wait. up when she's talking, and she's like, I will not work with anyone. <laughs> that has not watched it. Yeah. And she was like writing notebooks. Like she was like, I'm gonna watch it again tonight and take my notes on yeah, it. Yeah, and she said mm-hmm. all her friends would watch it. They would, she was like, go and they'd all start at the same time, they all watch. And That's she right. believes that it's going to change comedy because yes. much like the last uh, week's discussion we were talking about comedy and like socially there's you can't say this you can't say mm-hmm, that yeah. everyone like social media uh it's just really hard not to offend people and where does comedy exist in all of that in this world. Yeah. Um so uh, we did watch it, yes, we did. Um, it and all hundred hasn't seen it yet. But how are you she's even still to. on our improv team? What do you do? I'm just kidding. Uh, have we had a practice since then? Yeah. Uh, no, do we? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm watching it, uh-huh. and I think the thing with Nanette is, um, if, if for those of you who don't know, what we're talking about it's a it's a Netflix special. It's a go watch it now. Pause this. Yeah. Oh. She's an Australian uh, comedian, but. And so we might spoil some things here. So if you don't want to be spoiled on it, I say... Uh, I don't want to be spoiled on it. Should go walk out till y'all are done? Uh, sure. <laughs> I know. Would that be weird? Well, sure. maybe I'll... Yeah. And I'll come back in. Okay, go for it. Okay. Oh, yeah, I All right, you guys. So. We'll see y'all. I don't want to be spoiled because it's I really true. want to watch it. I'm going to watch it It tonight. is so good. I also yeah. don't want you guys to be spoiled on it. I think that you should take my pause leave. it and go watch it on Netflix. Yeah, because it, it, it is important to kind of... She sets it up... <gasps> Everything's happening. She sets it up in a certain way that is basically, you know, kind of giving you a normal um, comedy show. Uh huh. And then she flips it and she explains what she's doing as it's happening. Yeah. Um, and so I'm watching it. I'm going like, oh, okay. I'm like watching this comedy show. She's very like smart and she's kind of wording things and yeah. she definitely has like her points about, uh, you know what I mean? About okay, like. Uh, I'm a lesbian, and uh, it's uh, talking about people's opinions about that growing up in a very conservative part of Tasmania, I believe. Mm -hmm. A very conservative part of Australia where, you know, homosexuals are evil and all this stuff. And then she starts explaining how a joke is two parts. Yes. It's a setup, 
and a punchline. Punch and when she starts, to me, when it shifts is when she starts, when she gets really mad about the Trump thing and she starts railing in on Trump. I just remember that there was a moment where, like, and I think that she's talking about this, um, where, you know, you're just watching a comedy show, her talking about, like, blue, and, like, blue means these kind of things, and you even said, like, oh, that's a... That's yeah, a since you're going to be talking only over here, I'm going to, like, we should move this mic over here. Okay. Yeah, just grab the mic. Hey, mics. Um, yeah, and even I remember you saying, like, oh, that's a very, like, Seinfeld-esque joke, or, like, that's a very, you know, Seinfeld, like, a stand-up th- thing, and then I just remember a moment where it was, like, you had to like sit up and watch the rest of the. She the, sneaks up on you a little bit, and it's kind up. of really cool because she's, she's telling you what she's doing to you at the time. She's setting yes. you up, and she's saying, and and, so to to kind of not get up too off track here, it's yeah. like the it shifts into this point where she starts getting very very real. Yes. And, she then goes into, at the end, telling you. Remember that story I told you? That part messed me up. Where the guy realized I was a woman and walked away. She's like, that wasn't the end of the story. It didn't happen, yeah. He actually beat the shit out of me. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, holy I, shit. Yeah. And then doubles down on that and says, and I also wouldn't have been raped. You know what I mean? And it uh-huh. wasn't fair to be picked out of the pack like that. And... The emotion and the anger and the truthfulness of it and, and all of it relating to how that's her real story. Yeah. The comedy version isn't her real story and she yeah. has to tell her truth mm-hmm. so that she can be the person that she needs to be and have the catharsis that she needs and be the person she wants to be. Yes. Um, like the self-deprecation that comes with it. Right, exactly. Which is something that, yeah, comedians go through all the time. Just incredibly, incredibly powerful. It was and poignant. It was incredible. I was thinking about it for a long time just oh, yeah. because some of the ways she would flip certain things, certain things she would say, I'd be like, yeah. What? Why am I not? When she talked about like Monica that. Lewinsky and how like mm-hmm. we were somehow responsible for that, or like talking about well, she- we're focused on her instead of a guy abusing their power. Yes. it was all about making jokes, about which Monica then leads Lewinsky. to like the problem with Hillary, which led to the present. Like it was like it literally like there are moments where when you look at a stand-up routine or a special, you're supposed to be entertained. Mm-hmm. And this, no, I think there was a huge switch in this one, and this is why it's blowing up, where you are not, you obviously are entertained, entertained yes. but you are listening. Like you are, you well, are like, says, I, w- I was entertaining you, and now I, I need you to just listen to me. Well, she says, I'm going to leave you with your uncomfortableness. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's another thing I think when I, really something, because I've seen it twice now, Yeah. is that I really got is how powerful she mm-hmm. seems you know is that moment when because she, she does a whole long bit about van gogh uh no sorry um about uh, picasso, picasso. she mm-hmm. does van gogh too but the, about picasso both are about, beautiful stories yes yeah. but about how we've minimized the 17 year old girl because we decided that her potential could have never been as much as picasso's yeah. and i was like why did you assume? she was like how could you assume that she was at her prime like that kind of stuff yeah yes exactly mm-hmm. yeah and she was like a 17 year old girl's never in her prime. I'm in my prime. Won't you test your power out on Ooh, me? Yeah. That part, it just. Super powerful. And then you just sense it in the audience too the energy. Like everyone just, it's silent, listening to everybody, just like it's mm. buzzing in there. Like it was such an incredible thing. Like it is that thing where women are treated that, like it is being treated that way as a woman and then her appearing the way she does and being gay. Well, it's, it, yeah, and it's so, like, in. It's so pre- not prevalent, what am I trying to say? Um, it's so of the now, too, because all these stories come out. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? With like, and there's sometimes like these, these nameless faces accusing people, and you wonder, like, why do they feel like they don't have the power to say anything? Why? And, yeah. And I feel like she really hones in on that. She really and does. And it's because, like, in society, you, you look at, uh, like, this guy in power, mm-hmm. and he means so much more to the yeah. world, to everybody. And you just, you dis, you're dismissive, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, uh, uh, of these other people. Yeah. And even if you don't want to be, it's impossible for me to not have a, like, 
a, a, a larger beam. I'm, I'm trying to look for like a man power. I don't see any here. But like if Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Yeah. If something was said about a no-name woman came out and said something. Yeah. It would be impossible for my brain to erase all of the. Um, Make him be quiet. It would be impossible for me to erase all of the positive, like large, looming large feelings I have about Leonardo DiCaprio, even mm-hmm. if I wanted to, because my brain would have them all in here, it would just be struggling. Yeah. It's like the Cosby thing. And all of a sudden Absolutely. everyone was like, it's like, I can't do this. Yeah. yeah. And, and eventually everyone did. Yes. But there's that first thing where you're like, You have to like what? deconstruct it and take it apart. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't make any sense to my brain. Yeah. But that happens on smaller levels too. Like completely, I, completely does. I, just the other day when we were talking on the phone and I told you about that weird situation that happened in the grocery store. Where, mm, yeah. yeah, where I was in this grocery store way too late. Um, I needed to get some food. Um, and the guy at the register, I was buying eggs, like some bell peppers or something. He was like, you're not going to eat all those, like all 12 eggs by yourself. Like, who are you taking and what are you doing? He's being mm-hmm. so creepy weird. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to get out of there. And I did eventually like lie and say, you know, I'm taking him to the airplane. Like I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. I have to go. Cause I, but then mm-hmm. I was like, I have to lie right now. Like I've got to sit here and say that. Like. Mm. It was I think like, you're saying, like, he gave you an uncomfortable feeling and, yes. like, you felt like you had to take it, like, you couldn't yeah. say anything necessarily. You had to be polite. I was so polite and I was like, ha, ah, like, laughing, mm. very uncomfortable. And it's like, you are working for, not for me, but I'm, I, I'm the patron. You're supposed to sell me this, like, and I leave, like, it was such a weird thing. And you were like... I haven't even been around a situation like that where like yes, no like, one would say that. No one if says you that were to you around. when I'm there. Yes. And I always find it weird because the, multiple times you're like, "This happened. This happened." A weird, weird situation. situations. And I'm always like, "Oh, it's so strange because it never hap- It doesn't happen when I'm Correct. around. It's mm-hmm. something I'm not privy to. Like how guys just decide that they can be creepy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, don't get me wrong. And again, I'm about to like give an excuse which I don't need to give. I was about to be like. You know, it's one in the morning at a Vons. Like, uh, shame on me. Like, it's that where I'm like, that is such a thing. Yeah, I, where mean, I think of grocery stores as pretty safe environments. Yeah. yeah. And I, it was a weird it's not thing. The, it's not the place, though. No. It, it, that happens all the time. I don't think it matters the place. No. I think it's just, I, I think it's just certain people and their ideas yeah. about what they can and do and say. And wanting to keep people comfortable. Like, it's like, I'm going to mm. make sure you feel comfortable. And I think mm. she she does such an incredible job with telling that story and then coming back around to tell you that's not the story. Like, I'm not going to make you comfortable by being self, like, deprecating any more. Yeah. I'm quitting this. The story like, has I'm, three parts, beginning, middle, and I saw an interview with her, too, where mm-hmm. she said um, she was supposed to quit. With Jimmy? Is I'm this? not sure if this is with Jimmy, okay. but she was, like, supposed to quit. And she's like, no, I can't. And yeah. she's like, no, I'm stuck. I'm either an, I'm either an idiot, idiot or a hypocrite. And, she and she's like, I'd rather be a hypocrite, be a hypocrite mm-hmm. which that was is really, really found. smart. Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean? I'm totally forgiven. Oh, yeah. One thing I do think about this, too, is that I didn't realize that she does this show. And mm-hmm. she's done now, I believe. But she was doing that show as a show. And when you watch it once, I'm like, how do you do that as a show? It seems like one time exactly. only. It seems like, like you, you just, just did it. But if like she parting the sea, like you don't just keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if she goes there and gets that emotion, that angry, and, and really touches those emotions every time, that must be exhausting. Yeah. And I just, it must be really powerful. I don't know if she's changing it now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That yeah. people have seen it or whatever, but it's, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, come back come in. Come sit we're down. Pretty we're much we're pretty much done. We're pretty much done talking about <laughs> um, all, all I just want to end on is like, uh, thank you for asking that about. Thank uh, you. It's a really, really powerful uh, thing. And, and I, I think, I don't know, I think everyone should see it. And I just think for me, just as like a final parting thought, it just, the way, she, how smart she is mm-hmm. about twisting our narrative. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. I think it was like the big thing for me. And if anyone can do that, that's what comedians do the best is they take your perception they're like no this is how I see it That's she did that favorite. really really incredibly in her own very new and powerful way beautiful that, very important everyone something go yeah and something actually stuck out that we didn't talk about oh, Andra, watch out um, is her ability to um, where a guy was like saying things about her anxieties and all of her depression like getting in the way or like talking mm. about Van Gogh and the mm. flowers which we did talk about with Holly so you're not too out of it yeah. <laughs> um, and that touched me a Two lot Yes, um, that that touched me a lot because I think that all the time because a lot of artists deal with struggling with, you know, doubting and not, I don't want to say mental issues, but like 
No, it's true. Like, yeah, like you depression, suffer. anxiety, you suffer mm -hmm. for your art. And the way that she fought in that, in, and got so fiery about it mm -hmm. um, to tell him that this is the reason the flowers mean this and it's because of this. Yeah, like, she, yeah it's like my, like, like, I don't know how she, she's much better wording this stuff. Of course, yeah. But it's, yeah. Like, it's like, how dare you kind of like decide that like my suffering is worth it so you can yeah, have your like entertainment. some mm -hmm. entertainment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like we don't have to suffer. No. It's like I don't have to suffer just so I can like be, um, have this art. Mm -hmm. But ironically enough, it is her suffering that has created this piece of art. The same way that his medicine, Van Gogh, like he, it made the yellows pop out more. So he was an even more vibrant artist because of the medicine that he was taking. And that's why it looked that way. And I'm like, go fuck yourself, dude. Like it was like, the, I love that. And also we didn't even talk about the fact that art history is like her major and like everything. I know. Like goes, there's so much to talk about. You guys, please go watch it. I, watch it I need, tonight, like me. Yes, watch it. I'll come over and watch it again. It's so good. I All love right. it. Um, we've been talking for a while, so I'm just going to wind this down. Here, baby. Um, <laughs> Hey, 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 good girl. evening, everybody. So, <laughs> if you guys have questions or things you want us to talk about, mm -hmm. please ask. Uh, there's just some things people talked about, like online. I just want to touch on. Did anybody on them have really specific type pool questions? Yeah, um, people talked about like, uh, why are we the type pool? Hmm? Um, oh. Why are we called the type pool? It's mainly just because we really love the idea of this like eclectic place where anything can happen and mm -hmm. I think when we first started the channel it was we wanted it to be more eclectic content like you're getting now you're getting yes. vlogs you're getting this talk mm -hmm. and we weren't doing that and I, that was mm -hmm. a big part of the break mm -hmm. well, we stopped. Mm -hmm. was yeah. just like it has to be more than reactions yeah. like yeah. we can't yeah. just be a channel that just does reactions yeah. so yeah. Uh, we just want to do other things and we'll keep trying to do other things yeah. and, and, the and I want to say like if you guys haven't seen our most recent vlog um, we do create like a stop motion board in it and it reminds me of, of have you seen it yet? You'll just send it to me like 30 oh. minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't it's, seen it yet. It's, <laughs> it's, I, we're very proud of it. <laughs> It's so, it's, oh boy, did that take some time. Um, but it um it reminds me of that a little bit, of like, it's a little area that you guys can come to, to to find little bits of beauty that are like moving and magic. And we want to give that that feeling and those little vibes and that magicalness. It's like a magical you. safety, because everyone likes yeah. a tide pool. You love stumbling, and you always mm -hmm. stumble upon it. You're like, oh, mm. I'm in a tide pool. Yes, that's exactly and it's just how such it all a nice happens. little magical fairy pool in my mind. You yeah. know, I'm just like, yay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet, and it's everything that hasn't been sucked back into the ocean. It's just kind of there existing yeah. by itself. And, and <laughs> you guys are in the tide pool. I think that's a major yeah. part of it, too, that that you know, like it's not just us filling the tide pool. You guys bring the sea slugs and the anemones and the hermit crabs. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like it's it's the community as well. I think yeah. that that's what we yeah. wanted the whole thing to it's be. It's a chill community. I love yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, ask questions. Um, no. Does anyone have anything else they want to say? We're still talking. No. No. Good. I, yeah, that's good. Thank you so much. Thank you for your questions. Right. Thank yeah. you for watching. We'll keep going. All right. Thanks. Yeah, bye. Yeah. Bye. bye.